I think it became kind of more and more shocking as he began to be very aggressive towards me when I declined his search. I am the government was his, his quote there. Where's your bag at? I, I don't consent to search, sir. You don't have to consent. Where's your backpack at? Where is it? Under your seat? I, it got put away, but I don't consent to being searched. I don't care. So this is fine. For years, the Institute for Justice has represented innocent travelers who had cash illegally seized from them at our nation's airports. Often acting on little or no information, Federal Drug Enforcement Administration agents target certain travelers and bully them into letting their bags be searched. Recently, a flyer captured the DEA's unconstitutional tactics on camera. This is the most complete footage we have ever seen. Set your bag down and then you can walk on the plane. You can do that, but no, you can't take that. You're not, you're not with the, what do you call it? I've seen these like videos on YouTube before. You're not with the... I'm the DEA, yeah, I'm, the, I'm the government. That's great. But do, you, do, you have, do you have like legal ability yes, to search? Yes, right yeah. I, I was in Cincinnati on a business trip and I had gotten sick the prior night, so I had to rebook my flight to a last minute flight back to New York. He had basically just asked me for ID and to search, if he, if he could search my bags. And when I started to decline, he pulled out his, uh, his badge and said that he was with the DEA. I'd almost imagine that this had to be some kind of mix up. After David refused consent to the DEA agent, he should have been allowed on his flight. But the footage shows that the agent instead chose to double down on violating David's rights. The DEA agent claimed that he could keep and search David's bag. But that's just not true. The Fourth Amendment protects the stuff in your bag just as much as the stuff in your pockets. I told the officer, I've seen this on YouTube before, this is a very weird thing, I'm aware of what you guys are doing right now. I was scared that he would do something worse with my bag in his custody. So when he threatened to take my bag to, you know, back to the police area, wherever he was going to take it, I was worried that he might do something worse, like plant evidence within my bag, which would be the absolute worst case scenario. Am I being detained right now? Not you, but you're, you're I'm bag. free to I'm, go. Not your bag. I okay. told you like I'm gonna walk. You can't do Am I being detained? Robert, am I free to go? Time out. David was completely within his rights to refuse to let his bag be searched. But it is risky to simply ignore law enforcement officers and board your plane. Before leaving an encounter with law enforcement officers, we recommend asking if you're being detained. If they say yes, cooperate with the officer's lawful commands. And if they try to take your bag away to search it, do not attempt to resist with force or violence. But do not say you consent. If they say no, then you're free to leave. Okay, now back to the action. The agent then followed David onto the plane, grabbed another passenger's bag, and tried to walk off with it. Oh, that's my, hey. Where, that's yours. Where's your bag at? I, I don't consent to search, sir. You don't have to consent. Where's your backpack at? And so I, I thought the plane was gonna take off because we were well past the kind of gate closing time at the time he boarded. You want to watch the dog? Yes, you want please. To sit in your seat? I would like to watch well, the then dog. Then come out. Up to you, man. Well, I followed him off the plane because he had my backpack, and I wasn't going to leave an airport with my work laptop, uh, my passport, a lot of my documentation from work, and so I didn't have a choice. The agent again insists that he does not need David's consent to take his bag. But without probable cause of a crime, DEA agents cannot seize your belongings against your will, period. Okay, so when you buy a last minute ticket, yeah. we get alerts. We okay. come out to any and all flights, doesn't matter who you are, race, sex, nothing, right? Yeah. We come out and we talk to those people, which I've tried to do to you, but you wouldn't allow me to do it. Am I, am, I, am I under suspicion of a crime right now? Do you have probable cause? So, we have a lot of money and drugs going out of every airport oh, to, to New York. Okay. It's an influx of it. Okay. Okay. So that's, you, that's my you, Am I being suspected of a crime? I just want to see I, I don't know. 
The DEA hires informants to alert agents when someone purchases a last minute ticket to a known center of drug activity, which is most major American cities. Of course, buying a last minute ticket isn't probable cause of a crime. That's why the agent keeps refusing to identify any crime that David is suspected of. If you have to take a last minute flight for work or to visit a sick loved one, guess what? You'd be on this list too. Do you have probable cause for a search? I have probable cause for a dog to walk up to smell your bag, yes. Is, like I'm gonna, have, actually, my, my lawyers are going to be, gonna you be taking this you up didn't with take you. take your bag off like I asked you to? I don't, I don't asked have you to, to. I asked you if I was down. being detained and I can, I can walk away if not. That's you can, the, yes, I, but I not your bag. the Constitution your bag like, very the vigorously. I asked you to put your bag down. You don't have rights to my bag. I don't know who you are. So I was waiting by the jet bridge for about five minutes, and I remember seeing the dog handler pop up through one of the kind of airport gates. And at first, you know, he pointed the dog towards my bag, and the dog took a smell and just ran straight past it. Um, a few seconds later, he started, you know, clicking his fingers, and the dog, dog started coming back, and I saw him basically gesture at my bag. <laughs> The Supreme Court has held that agents can't extend a traffic stop to make someone wait for a drug dog unless they have probable cause. The same should hold true at an airport. And it's not like drug dogs are infallible. In fact, dog searches have a high false positive rate. As it turns out, man's best friend is often more invested in pleasing their handler than anything else. Okay, I'm working on your bag. Okay. Now this is your legal right. You can allow us to look at it, or you can tell me no, and we can, we'll write, we can write a search warrant. We can apply for one. I don't know if we get one or not. But we'll I don't one. consent to be searched. So you don't want us to search your bag either? I don't consent to be searched. Okay. All right. Well, then we got to take your bag back. So do you want to sit with us at the PD while we try to get a warrant on your bag today? What do you want to do? I just don't, I don't consent to be searched, sir. I'm sorry. With the questionable dog alert, the agent now claims that he can easily get a warrant to search the bag. David continues to refuse to consent to a search. We know our law. We know what we're doing out here and what we can and cannot do. Okay. It's a piece of paper that will literally stay with us. It just says that you're allowing us to search it. If you want to sign your name that says that we can search it, which I don't know why it's so difficult, we'll search it. If not, we're going to do the same thing I just told you, my friend, if you don't over here. Think about it for a minute. I know you're irritated. You know, uh, I, I have a feeling. Yeah. I know you're annoyed. And I'm annoyed, too, that you caused such a scene for something so silly. Defending your constitutional rights is not silly. If something like this ever happens to you, visit ij.org and let us know. In the moment, I felt extremely violated by his actions. Um, I felt extremely angry and extremely shocked by what happened. I, I, the law actually doesn't distinguish between bodily property. I, you know, I'm being detained now because I, I, my bag is yeah, taken my property so you're, for you're it. Not out in the public. You're in, you're in an airport. And the, this is a public. This is a public area for what it's your worth. Your bags are, are not. They're, they're, they're different than your person. Okay. Okay. There's, there's a difference. And we wouldn't do this and be doing it across the country if it wasn't legal. I think over the past few months, as the anger has dissipated, it's been a feeling of just, you know, Privileged in the sense that nothing had happened to me, but injustice for those where something much worse had happened to them. What happened to David was illegal, but sadly it occurs every day at America's airports. The reason? Something known as civil forfeiture. It is completely legal to travel domestically, as David was, with any amount of cash. But agencies like the DEA seize cash anyway. Why? Under civil forfeiture laws, they get to keep the lion's share of any cash they can seize and successfully forfeit. So if David had been flying with a large amount of cash, the agent would have seized it, 
Just like what happened to our clients, Rebecca Brown, Stacy Jones, Kermit Warren, Jerry Johnson, Rustam Kasazi, and others. In fact, the DOJ Inspector General warned the DEA nearly 10 years ago that these type of searches threatened civil rights. Despite these warnings, the lure of millions in civil forfeiture dollars has caused these gross violations to continue nationwide. Agents often deceive flyers, saying jetway searches are just part of regular airport security. They threaten to make passengers miss their flights unless they consent. They seize money without alleging any crime. The money they take through civil forfeiture then flows into funds controlled by law enforcement agencies, not Congress. It's wrong, and IJ is working right now to stop it with a class action lawsuit against the DEA. I don't think I would do anything differently. I would certainly record the situation because when I recounted the story to other people, nobody believed me until I showed them the video. Um, I think the second part about this is to have a bit of conviction in your rights and to understand them well. What happened to me was wrong, and knowing that this happens to a lot of other people, um, I feel that sharing my story will hopefully make a difference in the process.